My name is Barbara Rich, and welcome to a very special segment of Bifocals. This episode is slightly different than most because of the subject matter. The other guy is not here with me right now because he conducted the on-camera interview many years ago. We both accompanied Sam Ricusa, a Pearl Harbor survivor, during the 60th anniversary of the attack on December 7th in Oahu. Sam Ricusa will tell his first-hand account of that day. Following the interview, we will play two classic movie trailers without our usual comment, and you'll see why. So without further ado, we will proceed with our special presentation. It's just before my 20... Second birthday, I was 21 years old. That's uh, turn on the 11th. I turned 20, uh, 22. I joined the Marines in 1939, October 2nd. We expected that we'd go to war because uh, England and Germany who had. Uh, were fighting, and, and France also was uh, involved in the war at that time. You never know what's going to happen. Well, I recall it pretty well. What day was it? It was a uh, morning, and uh, uh, we just got up, and we'd missed breakfast because we overslept. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so we were going to get some stuff uh, at the canteen, and and. Uh, place we call a greasy spoon out there and uh, and then we were going to play some cards uh, a bunch of us were going to play we we're going to play poker and I can't even remember the names of the guys that I was going to play poker with I was uh, Corporal uh, Rudd and, and Sergeant Sears and all of a sudden what you heard well we heard uh, bombing and uh, we heard bombs going off and and so we went out. We we were living we were living in tents along the parade ground, the uh, Marine barracks, and uh, uh, so we just went outside the tent and looked up and and uh, saw the planes flying around and and dropping uh, uh, bombs and, and uh, <clears throat> we thought there was maneuvers of some kind. Saw saw the red circle on the planes, and we thought there was a red team, you know, that probably, because uh -huh. uh, they had teams, color teams sometimes in, uh, in maneuvers, and I can't remember the sergeant's name that had been uh, in, uh, uh, been in China, and he knew that that was a Japanese, those were Japanese planes, he knew that marking on, on there. Then, then uh, suddenly they started flying, flying over us after they dropped the bombs in the harbor they dropped go over our barracks and uh, they would s started strafing us shooting shooting at us and we did we were unarmed at that time mm -hmm. anyhow they would fly over us and bomb hickam field which which was uh, just on the other side of our our uh, parade ground there and at that time now right now it's part of the uh, civilian uh, airport uh, on a little airport, all we, all we had were uh, rifles with no ammunition, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the sergeant, a few, few of the NCOs, the sergeants had uh, pistols, but they couldn't even fire those because uh, uh, no one had any ammunition at that mm -hmm. time. So we went. The army had to get ammunition. They told us that we had to have a, a requisition for it, and uh, who who was at the armory? As uh, I, I believe it was a, a lieutenant, a, a second lieutenant that was in, in there. Anyhow, he told us that we had to have requisition, and uh, uh, Did he, could he hear the bombing and oh, see what was going yeah, on? I, I guess he could. <laughs> I, we, we could hear it, and uh, but uh, uh, the, he wanted to refuse to give us any, uh, give us any ammunition. So uh, uh, anyhow, Sergeant uh, Sears. Sergeant says, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna take the ammunition then, and and 
And he said that we couldn't do that, but anyhow, we just went in there and, and took it. We just pushed our way in and, and uh, 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 loaded up uh, uh, some dollies that they had in there. And uh, uh, we got ammunition uh, for rifle ammunition, pistol ammunition, and then machine, machine gun ammunition for both, both 50 and, and uh, 30 caliber uh, machine guns, mm -hmm. and we also got machine guns because we, we had none uh, with us. Uh, our, we weren't assigned any machine guns for, for our outfit. We deployed them uh, among the, the heavy equipment there. I was in the engineers, and you know, they, we had heavy equipment, and uh, we sort of used it, that, that for cover for us. <laughs> Bulldozers and, and carry-alls and uh, different kinds of tractors and stuff. It had all kinds of heavy equipment there. And uh, uh, we, would, uh, we were in among them and uh, used those for, for cover and uh, uh, set up machine guns. And, and everybody, everybody had, uh, then everybody around us got, got, got ammunition for whatever they had. And uh, <coughs> we started shooting and uh, the, the Marines uh, uh, that were uh, deployed out there on the, on the around the parade ground there were credited with getting three planes to, to, that were flying over. So they would come over in and in waves, you know. It'd uh, be a little break, and then a, a bunch of them would start coming over randomly. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed like, and they were flying very low. I, I would say less than a hundred feet off the ground. And, and just fly over the barracks and uh, uh, and strafe, strafe in the fields as they were going there. They just wanted to keep us down. What they were trying to get were the ships and the planes, mm -hmm. and their, with their bombs. They didn't bomb us at all. Yes, they were trying to get the, the equipment there. I think I think it was a little over over an hour because they they came in, in two big waves. And there must have been. 50, 100 planes, 50 to 100 planes, and, and I'm sure some of them went, went over more than one time. Mm -hmm. The ships were all, there were ships all over the place. No, I didn't see them getting hit. Well, I see, because we had the, the, the uh, <coughs> Marine barracks was between us and, the, and the, the harbor. We visited, after the attack, we visited a lot of uh, ships, a couple of, couple of ships you could see that uh, were, uh, gone aground mm -hmm. and several days later they they brought up a, a, I think they said it was a two-man submarine it was a very small submarine that uh, was I would say 30 feet long a Japanese mm. yeah it, it was Japanese it was uh, that they'd captured mm. then, uh, then it stopped and stopped no more there was no more bombing but then we then we, we started preparing Everybody, everybody was armed by the by the time that that was over. Everyone was tense to, to, because they wanted, you know, wanted to be sure that we we saw what was coming at, at us. There was no more firing until till uh, uh, that night, about an hour after sunset, or maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I don't know after sunset. <clears throat> uh, we heard plane. A plane, I think. I don't know whether it was just one or, or more than one, but <clears throat> uh, it started coming over, and everybody started shooting at it. They picked, they picked it up in uh, in uh, the uh, lights, and but uh, well, we do know now that it wasn't a Japanese plane. It, it was it was American. It was American plane, mm. and we were shooting at it, and. Uh, as far as I know, we didn't hit it, but the place lit up like Fourth of July. Oh, God. The tra tracer bullets just go flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. wow. Then we then we went. We rode around the truck. There probably five of us, four or five of us on, on that, with a machine gun, 50 caliber machine gun mounted on it, and uh, <clears throat> we were patrolling around the, the island. And uh, when uh, we got close to some pineapple fields, uh, the, some of the natives there uh, that were working in the pineapple field 
came uh, came over to to our truck there and told us that they that they'd had uh, they killed the Japanese that had crashed crashed this plane in the, in the, one of the fields there, and uh, one one of them give me give me gave me uh, the, the knife that he said that he killed killed him with. And hmm. I brought it home and I gave it to my nephew hmm. uh, Eddie, and I think that he still has it. At least the th last time I talked to him, he uh -huh. still had it. So. Hmm. Of course, saw a couple of the plane, planes that uh, had gone down, and I got a part, piece of one plane, and I made Mom a, a, a bracelet out of out of uh, hmm. uh, one. I don't know whether you ever saw it. It was a double heart bracelet. I think I have. Uh -huh. Okay, and and I have a piece of that. Uh, uh, still have a piece of that plane in a one of one of those. Uh, um, Albums that, that album I made that was made out of wood. Mm -hmm. I have a, the, a piece of the plane in there, and uh, and that's a, where that accommodation that uh, accommodation. Oh, that's from Roosevelt. Uh, oh, okay. From Roosevelt. I'm pretty sure it was from Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been uh, at the time. Yeah, went aboard ship, and then we held a manu held maneuvers on Maui, and. Uh, and uh, then uh, we got we got um, orders to go to Saipan. We didn't know we were going Saipan, but we got orders that, that while we were board ship that that we were going to continue to uh, uh, battle and go into battle and go into an island. We knew we were going to an island, but we didn't know where. And uh, so we. Uh, Went to uh, uh, while we were but while we were aboard ship, we were attacked by Japanese planes, and this uh, this was a, a week or ten days after we left Hawaii. We landed in Saipan. Harbor attacked on Pearl Harbor. I was not I was not afraid. I was so mad to, about it that that I was not afraid. Uh, but our first landing, you know, you got to think about it. You know, when it happens to you suddenly, uh, you you have a different reaction. But when you think about something like going into to a a, a landing, uh, go, going in, it was an airfield, uh, and we were, we were between the airfield and the ocean, and uh, late that night. Probably around midnight. I'm not sure the the time. And during that night, the the bands I attacked happened, and and uh, uh, we by that time we'd had a gun gun emplacements set up all all along the airfield. And as uh, they were coming across the airfield, there we were uh, we we, could, we were just shooting them down, and they just kept on coming. Sure. Band size. Well, uh, uh, when they got they got about. I would say over halfway across the airfield, and I guess they they gave gave up. They re retreated. They retreated after that. And went back to back to the other side of the airfield, and then the next morning, next day, well, we what made them different? What made them different was that they were they uh, uh, screaming and hollering, and they were out in the open because they had no cover. There's an airfield. It's just a it's just uh, right out in the open, and. Uh, uh, they, I guess they were trying to scare us with their hollering and stuff, but we were just cutting them down. So, mm -hmm. and the next day, uh, we were pretty complacent. They, we had captured a, a over to the side of the airfield. There was a, a Japanese ammunition dump, uh, uh, maybe 75, 100 yards uh, uh, north. East of us, uh, sometime in the uh, on the second day, they st they started using their uh, artillery and um, aimed it at at that am ammunition uh, dump that they had there, and uh, they uh, exploded it. Blew up their own ammunition. Blew, blew up their own ammunition. Pieces of uh, some some pieces of. Uh, 
uh, were about 18 inches long and uh, fragments and they'd come fly, flying through the air and one one piece landed in, in the foxhole I was in and killed a guy right next to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't even recall his name. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, uh, were you injured then? No, I was not injured. When were you? When were you injured? I was the only the only day that I was injured at all, and I was I did not record it was on the first day when when we, uh, at Pearl Harbor that I got hit in the ankle, but it was uh, uh, with a a dying a dying bullet, and it just uh, uh, burned my flesh, and and uh, just sort of. Uh, uh, tore a little bit of the flesh away there, and and uh, that's uh, uh, the only time that I I w was injured in, during not uh, during the war, and I didn't report it because I d didn't want to. I I thought we were going to go from 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 there uh, on toward Japan, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to say that I was hurt, and, but it, I, it, it got infected a little bit, but then it went away after a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Where did uh, you get, uh, where do you think you picked up uh, malaria? I picked up malaria. Got infected a little bit, but then it went away after a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Where did uh, you get, uh, where do you think you picked up uh, malaria? I picked up malaria. I picked up what they thought was malaria at that time. I, and I believe that it was the onset of uh, uh, dinghy fever instead of malaria. but. Uh, it was on on Saipan. In fact, is uh, while I was still in the service, several times I got I got recurring chills, and and, uh, and they told me that I had malaria. Uh, so I guess that's where I got the malaria was in in, in Saipan, mm. but then also dinghy fever. And anyhow, I lost I lost uh, probably twenty pounds or more. Probably maybe even 30 pounds well, um, from this dinghy fever, and then prob probably probably the, the result of the dinghy fever, and also uh, not getting sick and tired of eating sea rations, and we'd capture uh, some days we'd capture some, you know several Japanese that were holed up. Some of them were some of them were sick with the dinghy fever, and and probably malaria. I'm, I'm not sure what they had, but uh, during that time, we um, uh, I picked up a lot of uh, Japanese rifles and and Japanese uh, souvenirs, and, as it were. But I I was more interested in eating, <laughs> so uh, we every chance I'd get go aboard ship and go aboard the ships that were coming into the harbor there and trade the all these uh rifles and and helmets and whatever whatever we had a, a samari I had a couple of samaris and I wish I'd have known that the, some of them they said the 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 they had jewels under the under the wrappings on them they were wrapped with the a cord mm. uh on the, the swords and the, and the hand yeah on the mm. handles and they said that underneath those, uh, they found that uh, uh, a lot of them had were uh, encrusted with jewels. And uh, but uh, anyhow, I probably would have traded them off anyhow for food after we'd secured the island. Then, then we went to, uh, and took the, the, the island of Tinian. It was worse there in, in, on uh, Tinian than it was on Saipan. And uh, at least for for our outfit, snipers, we uh, would start shooting at them from different places, you know. And sometimes we could find out where they where they were shooting from. Sometimes we couldn't, and sometimes we could capture them or kill them, you know. And uh, <clears throat> but anyhow, it kind of affected me mentally. This, this after you had so many uh, months uh, overseas, you got points, and. Uh, you were, uh, uh, they would, would rotate you out and send you back home, but but 
when I had enough points, well, they kept me out there because of because of my ra my rating. Uh, I said that I, they had held me there for the convenience of the government. Hmm. Uh, for uh, even if I had enough points to go, I had more than almost double points that it, that. Uh, and but well, finally, finally. Uh, uh, They, they let us go home from from uh, Tinian. We went home and early early September of '45, and uh, they kept me there until the 27th, and finally they discharged me. Uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. When uh, we get, came home, got, came home from uh, uh, Tinian. After we left Tinian and came back to the States, and uh, I got to see my oldest daughter the, for the first time. Uh, and she was, she was uh, uh, just two years old. You know about the uh, <coughs> Pearl Harbor movie coming out this summer? Yeah, I know. There's a movie coming out. Yeah, I don't... Uh, are you looking forward to seeing it? Yeah, I'd like to see what they what they did with it. Mm -hmm. See if it's uh, you know how authentic it is. I <clears throat> curious. attack on Pearl Harbor, as told from both the United States and Japanese sides. Once two nations made war, today they have collaborated to make a motion picture of unequaled magnitude and importance, recreating the actual events leading up to the day that changed the course of history. An unprecedented film, bringing you answers to one of the most controversial mysteries of our age. How could the attack on Pearl Harbor have happened? Colonel, sir, if we do spot something, what do we do? Report it to headquarters, damn it. How, sir? We haven't got a telephone, sir. There's a gasoline station about a mile down the road. They must have a phone. Why was one nation unprepared while another was geared for war? Why did the plan for the sneak attack split the Japanese high command wide open? We should have stayed in San Diego where it belongs. I made the mistake of pointing that out to Roosevelt. Why was Admiral Yamamoto marked for assassination by the Japanese warlord? Does anybody trust anybody anymore? Why was the President of the United States office considered a security risk? How did the Japanese rehearse their doomsday attack on Pearl Harbor? Damn it, why can't one...
Washington give us a full inside story. Why did they keep the American command in the dark? What part was played by the strange Japanese officer they called Gandhi? How did U.S. intelligence know of the attack before the Japanese ambassador did? What was the fateful blunder made by Admiral Nagumo? How was a mighty Japanese task force able to race 4,000 miles across the Pacific undetected? What caused the notorious radar error? Yeah, well, don't worry about it. Here's a message to the commanding general of Fort Chapter. Uh, is it marked urgent? No. Why was Washington's last urgent warning sent by ordinary telegram? The sun came up, the bombs came down, and the world came apart. For the first time, a motion picture tells what really happened at Pearl Harbor. spectacular film ever made. Para, para, para. 